All right, so now we've hit Thursday. So I think this is the day they're gonna take the pictures because they have to be turned in tomorrow. So this is the big day. Let's get the journal entries first. Oh gosh, there's a lot of journal entries. <laughs> okay. October 9th. Victoria woke me up at 8 in the freaking morning and got me into her car before I was even fully awake. She wound up taking me downtown, which was very, um, Victoria Lake. Arcadia Bay's tiny little downtown is the only place I think someone like her wouldn't be entirely embarrassed to go shopping. I imagine she probably gets most of her clothes in Seattle, though. Get this. She bought me an outfit I have no idea what the fuck her game is, except that I'm apparently going to be modeling for her contest photo. So I did what any reasonable, confused person would do, and went quid pro quo. When I, went her, uh, when I gave her the figurine I'd found, she had this kind of weirdly embarrassed reaction that was kind of cute, actually. What the fuck? And we got Chloe in the butterfly picture as our little bottom thing. Um, let's see. We wound up just relaxing in her car once we were parked back at school and watching the stars, uh, the stars come out. It was actually kind of nice. I can't believe I just wrote that. Victoria did everything she could to make me uncomfortable last year with her bitchiness, so being able to just chill with her was like waking up on a different planet. Once I made it back to my room, I was completely exhausted. I kind of just want to fall right into bed, but I was distracted by the beautiful new clothes Victoria had bought me, and her texting even though we'd just seen each other. She made it seem like she was trying to give me fashion advice, but I think she just secretly wanted my attention. And I wound up taking a selfie for her in the outfit. Have you completely lost it? What reality am I in that I'm texting Victoria and trading selfies? Selfies used to be her favorite thing to mock about me. <laughs> Little bunny, it's Katie's bunny. I guess it's starting to hit me now that Victoria is not exactly the person I thought she was. Or maybe we just never tried to get along enough before to see beyond the surface of one another. I decay, but I could get used to the new Victoria chase. I wouldn't call her nice, but she hasn't been outright mean to me either. Maybe we could be friends. Okay, yeah, no. Never mind. Now I know I'm definitely losing it. We're teaming up for the contest. I've got to keep my mind focused on that. I know she is, and that she'll go back to her usual self once it's over. That's so sad, Max. <laughs> Have some confidence in yourself. She wants to smooch you. Alright, so Thursday, we're at the front of Blackwell here. By the time it's morning, I'm so exhausted that the light of the sun just seems blinding instead of nice and warm. It's probably because I spent all that time awake last night texting Victoria when I could have been getting some much needed sleep instead. And I bet you stayed up even later giggling to yourself and rolling around in bed because you texted Victoria. It's totally too late to take all that back now in exchange for another hour of sleep. And really, it's not like I'd want to either. Sadly, that still can't take away the fact that I'm sleepy. Victoria texted me again this morning too, telling me she'd meet with me. She'd meet up with me in an hour so we could get going. I glance back down at our conversation from this morning with a little quirk to my lips. Meet me at the courtyard in an hour. I swear to God, if you sleep in, I'll come and drag your ass out of bed myself. Well, you would like that, wouldn't you, Victoria? Good morning to you too, Victoria. I'll be there. Victoria hasn't shown up yet, but I know she will. At this point, it's better to trust her. At the same time, I can't help but feel pretty self-conscious, standing out in the courtyard while wearing my new outfit. It's way different trying it on than trying it out, in public, with everyone around. Suddenly changing up your style to go with Victoria, it does look oddly suspicious, Max. But at the same time, it's cool. I've gotten a few compliments so far. Even Brooke, with her abrasive tendency, has stopped to tell me I look different in a surprisingly good way. That's as close as I'll ever come to have her really complimenting me, instead of eye-biling me viciously the whole time. And don't even get me started on Dana. How could I think I could ever escape her clutches? 
Halfway down the hall, she dragged me into one of her bear hugs, making it totally hard to breathe while squished up. That girl has got a grip. I fix my must hair up a bit, shifting on my feet. My attention goes back to my cell phone, and I tuck it back into my pocket before I can get too fixated on the time. Victoria is still not here yet, and I don't want to get too hung up on waiting for her. When she comes, she'll come. Plus, it's not as if she's late. I'm just kind of early. I'm more anxious about this contest than I previously thought, so even while I'm exhausted, I've been kind of just mulling around the courtyard, snapping pictures of squirrels and anything else that catches my attention. Not that doing so did anything to ease my nerves. It was easy to forget about how nerve-wracking this contest actually is when I was so caught up in everything else. Meaning Victoria. All right, I gotta adjust. Okay. Victoria, uh, everything else being the codename for getting along suspiciously well with Victoria Chase. Nice to see you followed my advice. Victoria, wait, she's wearing her old clothes. Victoria's voice comes suddenly from behind me, and I whirl around to face her. She... Wow. She looks as stylish as always. Maybe even more so than usual. A feat I didn't think was possible. She glammed it up for you, Max. And look how much you're blushing because of it. I can tell she's put a lot of effort into looking her best for our project. I didn't expect any less of her. Yeah, for your project, all right. Did you expect me not to? I wouldn't have been surprised if you bailed and decided to show up in your usual rags instead. Which, I mean, technically she has, but... <laughs> I can feel Victoria's eyes on me for a whole 30 seconds, and then she's barreling ahead, leading the way. Naturally, I follow. Is that your way of saying I look nice? Victoria looks over her shoulder at me, catching the smile I throw her way. Almost too quickly, she looks ahead again. You're flirting, Max. I already told you that earlier. Don't tell me your memory's running dry, too. Definitely not. I couldn't forget it even if I wanted to. Hmm... Do I want a cocky smooth, Max? Or kind of a nervous Max. I'm gonna go with cocky smooth. I just thought it'd be cool to hear it again. Once again, Victoria looks at me over her shoulder, brows raised. Color me shocked. I didn't take you for that type of person. Everyone likes compliments, Victoria. You're not the only one who likes having their ego stroked. Victoria glares at me briefly, turning her head and huffing. Remind me to never compliment you again. I laugh a little, catching up to her long strides. I'm just kidding. Kind of. Victoria just waves me off. So we have something we should probably talk about. Blushing, Victoria? We do? I can practically sense the telltale scoff from Victoria at my smart response, only it doesn't actually ever come. Huh. Yes, it's important, so we should probably get it over with now. Victoria glances at me, and it'd be really dense of me to not notice the serious tone she suddenly takes on. Before I can think twice, I gulp. If she's that serious, I wonder what it is. It's about the project? What else? I don't know. Maybe you decided it was time to have a heart-to-heart. -heart. I tease, and she just rolls her eyes at me. I totally swear I can see the faintest smile on her lips, though. It's gone just as quick. I was going over the rules again last night. We missed something important. Do they both have to be in the picture? Or do they both have to take one of each other? Ah! We missed something? There's no way. Out of literally anyone, I know that Victoria read the rules from top to bottom when we first got them. Or is she going to make it up? And say, I don't know. I don't know. I know because I did it too. And if I'm, go if I'm thorough about this, there's absolutely no way she isn't. Victoria's got such a tight grip on everything that I can't imagine she'd miss something. Like? I don't remember anything sticking out that seems like a huge problem. Victoria heaves a huge sigh, and she pinches the bridge of her nose. The rules, Max. Remember the rules. The rules? Isn't it just all about cooperation? Bonds between people and all that stuff? 
I have a feeling I'm not getting it, because Victoria looks about ready to say something again. And, uh, then we have to submit a photo. I pause as soon as the words are off my tongue, realizing just what they mean in the context of a problematic approach. The rules aren't that unusual, it's just... Oh, one photo. I can hear Victoria inhale slowly, and I wonder if the implication is hitting Victoria as hard as it's hitting me right now. What am I saying? Of course it is. She must have spent all of last night thinking about it. Otherwise, we wouldn't even be having this conversation. That doesn't ease the clench in my chest at all. In fact, it kind of worsens it. One photo to submit. Two photographers. Victoria slows down, eventually coming to a full stop. I'm glad for it, because talking about this while walking doesn't really sound like the best idea. Exactly. I was just wondering what you think we should do about that. Victoria runs her fingers through her bangs, a little crease between her brows. Her lips are slanted downward, and I've never seen her look so troubled. Is Max going to give up her chance of taking the photo so that Victoria has one for her portfolio since she's got the plan? Angry, yes. Troubled, no. It's reassuring that she's freaking out about it as much as me. Don't ever push things off. Don't be me, Max. Don't push it off. Just do it. I honestly don't know. What do you think we should do? Victoria makes a face at her. Browing at me, maybe? Victoria makes a face at me, furrowing her brows and then clicking her tongue. I didn't ask you so you could turn the questions around on me. Weakly, I shrug and lean back on my heels. So you don't know either? Christ, luckily for both of us, I do have an idea. The obvious solution would be to pick the best photo out of the bunch. Between the both of us, of course. The way Victoria says it, it sounds like a competition or something. Which is probably the exact opposite of what Mixed Dog wants us to do. <laughs> yeah, but that's the relationship you guys have, so... Whoop. Of course, Victoria could manage to make even this sound like a competition between us. I scrunch up my nose, and Victoria frowns at me. I know that look. Spit it out. Doesn't that sound a little too competitive for, you know, what this contest is supposed to be about? Victoria, for what it's worth, manages just to seem caught off guard at the question. She sobers up quickly enough, scoffing. Max, it's not like we're going to be work. Uh, it's not like we're not going to be working together. There's a difference between us competing and us choosing the best photo for us. It'll probably be yours. I blurt out without fully thinking it, and as soon as I do, I shut my eyes and hold back a groan. Nice one, Max. Way to throw your insecurities out there. I don't hear Victoria say anything at first. That's not true. You're fishing for compliments, Max, on accident. Well, not fishing, technically, because that was... But she's blushing now because she wants to give you a compliment. As shocking as this might seem, I'm working with you for a reason. Victoria shifts on her feet, and I notice that she's not meeting my eyes. It's a little jarring. She almost looks uncomfortable. You have ta talent, so own the fuck up to it, Max. Oh, um, I probably sound like an idiot because I can't find the words to express how her words make me feel. I settle on expressing my gratitude instead. It's the only thing I think of I can get right. Thanks, Victoria. My words come out a little breathy. What's leaving me so tongue-tied isn't the fact that she's praising me at all. It's that she's treating me like an equal instead of shutting me down. That she's actually acknowledging the fact that I have some sort of talent. I have no clue if she knows how much that means to me. Probably not, because not even I had a clue how much that meant to me until she said it. Hmm. We should get going. Victoria jerks her head in the direction of the parking lot, gesturing vaguely towards it. She takes a step forward, pausing only briefly to make sure I'm following. This time, we walk in sync with each other. Victoria has faith in me, or in my talent at least. I'd love to think it's the former. We make it to the boardwalk in almost no time at all, thanks to Victoria's nice car and the lack of traffic this early in the morning. Not that the traffic is ever much of an issue in Arcadia Bay anyways, but that's not exactly the point. Despite her near stillness of the streets, there's still quite a few people here, making the boardwalk look just lively enough for our shoot. I hope, for Victoria's sake, and mine. I actually can't tell too much, and that worries me. Maybe I should have planned ahead. 
I didn't exactly think we'd be out here so early, so maybe I'd been too reliant on the hustle and bustle of the boardwalk to get our shoot going. I guess it couldn't be helped, considering Victoria was really insistent on meeting up early. Isn't the best time for a shot, like, at 3 o'clock or something, right? Yeah? I wonder how she had the, uh, that much energy, even after we spent all that time texting each other last night. I know I'm still kind of exhausted. Maybe she never sleeps. Despite that, the anxiousness crawling down my back makes me bounce my leg a little, and I clutch at my camera bag, ready to get out there and scope out the area. Victoria glances over at me, unbuckling her seatbelt. Christ, you look like you're ready to run a mile a minute. Just, uh, just... Get ready to get out there and snap some photos. I shrug weakly, and I'm not exactly lying. I just don't feel the need to tell her that I'm worried about her liking the spot I picked, considering the lack of subjects. Not what I planned at all. Aren't you? Victoria scoffs at me, threading her fingers through her hair and shaking her head at me. <laughs> okay, so she's got birds by her head. And you know that song that's like, Suddenly birds... Oh, shoot, I messed up the tune already. But the one that's like, suddenly birds appear every time you are near. You just play that in the background. Victoria's head birds. Victoria scoffs at me, threading her fingers through her hair and shaking her head at me. Me? Please, I'm more than ready. Don't I look the part? I scoff this time, and when Victoria shoots me a look, I shoot her a little smile in return. What are you expecting me to tell you? Uh, what are you expecting me to tell you how amazing you look? Because I didn't know my opinion mattered that much. Ugh, dream on. I just wanted to see if you could state the obvious. Ouch, I'm hurt. Aw, sad face. Poor little hipster. Victoria throws me a smirk. It only lasts a moment before she sobers up completely, her gaze going inquisitive. Enough about that. We have actual, real important matters to discuss. About you, in particular. About me? Yeah, about you. Victoria gives me a once-over again. And honestly, it doesn't help my nerves in the least. You're nervous. Oh, um, I rub at the back of my neck, shrugging my shoulders weakly again. I should have known Victoria would catch on. She's not exactly stupid. Not that I make it hard anyways, with the frequency my leg is bouncing. I can't help it. Oh, that's so cute. She's so nervous. She have her hands in her pockets, too, or cross her arms, because that would be me. Rocking back and forth on my heels, because I cannot sit straight, stand straight. I'm just full of energy to burn. A little. She sighs loudly, opening the car door. Before she steps out, she gestures widely, uh, vaguely, to my camera bag, and then to me. Please, you shouldn't be. Put that artistic vision to work, Max. I know you can. She slides out of the car, and I force a little smile at the encouragement. I know. I guess you're right. I push open the door, fumbling with my bag for an instant before I actually manage to get out. You guess? I am. In any case, shouldn't I be the one freaking out? Victoria places a hand on her hip, raising a brow at me. I raise a brow in return, waiting for her explanation since I let you drag me here in the first place. Oh, of course she'd try to pull something like that. All I do is grin. You let me? I'm pretty sure I didn't drag you here. You let me pick, you know. What happened to giving my amateur tastes a chance, huh? I watch Victoria try to swallow back a smile, and it totally reaches her lips anyways. Technicalities, Max. And there she goes, waving her hand at me dismissively her eyes scanning the boardwalk like she's looking for something in particular. I don't know if she's finding it, because I follow her lead, my gaze landing on the few people milling up and down the boardwalk. I recognize some as students from Blackwell, most of which I don't really talk to. Others are just locals, most of which are fishermen. Today, it's... Victoria doesn't immediately come up with anything to say, and that's worrying in itself. I scan her face, catching the little crease between her brows. Hmm. Let's see. 
I don't think I should say it's boring here. I don't think I should make assumptions either, because I feel like Victoria would get mad at me, so I'm going to say it's just right, like Goldilocks. It just right? I offer, even though I'm completely positive, that's not at all what Victoria is trying to say. Not if I'm judging the look on her face correctly. Victoria t lear turns to look at me, tucking her brows together. Not exactly what I was getting at, but sure. Well, sure, it's not what I was going for, but... I scratch up my head, checking our surroundings again. There's definitely enough to work with. And even if there's not, I'm pretty sure that me and you can pull anything off. Victoria blinks, seemingly, seeming almost shocked again. I fight the urge to flush red at my genuine statement, but I mean it. After everything Victoria said, I'm not going to back out now. I refuse to. I like the sound of that. Looks like you're finally pulling your head out of your ass, Max. Hey! Victoria smirks at me. I'm being completely serious. Confidence suits you well. The way Victoria says that makes me bite my lip, smiling at the assertion. I like the sound of that, too. At the very least, Victoria's clear faith in us helps to ease out some of the tension I'm feeling. We can do this. I know we can do this. It's no time for me to be wallowing in whatever stupid self-doubt I have. We won't get anywhere like that. My first instinct is to reach for my camera bag, but I'm very promptly stopped when Victoria puts her hands on my arm. Not so fast, Caulfield. I tilt my head at her, and I wonder if she can actually see the question marks above my head. I'd think she wants to get right into it. She's staring at me curiously, a slight slant to her lips. What's the problem this time? Uh, wow. I'm kidding. What is it? I just have something I want to ask you. Are you going to ask for a date? No, probably not. I retract my hand from my camera back, and I think that makes Victoria realize she's got her hand laid over mine. She pulls it away quick. She's still holding your hand? Ah! Instead of moving to lean on the trunk of her car, like that makes whatever she's going to say any less intimidating. I cross my arms over my chest, waiting patiently. Go for it. I wanted to ask why you care so much about... Victoria gestures to our surroundings, and I assume she's talking about the people, or, uh, lack, in this case. Oh. I wanted you to like it. Maybe it's because I actually wanted you to, I don't know, like it? Since you let me pick, I didn't want you to bring you somewhere that you, you know. I trail off dumbly, realizing that it sounds a lot more ridiculous when I say it out loud like that. That, and Victoria staring at me oddly, eyebrows raised. She crosses her arms, breathing in softly, and releasing it in a slow sigh. You, what, wanted my approval? Wow, jeez, that makes it sound so official. Victoria snorts softly. If not then, uh, if not that, then what? I just didn't want you to be disappointed. I thought it'd be nice if this made you... I shrug, rubbing at the back of my neck and ignoring the way my mouth feels as dry as sandpaper. Happy? Victoria straightens up my words, and I hear her take a deep breath. Oh, Christ, Max. It's... Victoria has to collect herself. Really, I'm not in a rush. When she finally does manage something, she heaves an almost annoyed sigh. Ugh, it's seriously not that big a deal. It's not? It's not. Victoria flicks her wrist at me, resting her elbow against her car and standing up straighter. This place isn't like fucking Seattle or something. I'd know. But people are not. Like I said literally a few minutes ago, it hardly matters. Whether or not there are any idiots around a photograph, it's not going to stop us from taking remarkable images. Ha, huh. yeah, I guess you're right. I avert my gaze from Victoria almost bashfully at the smug smirk she gives at me. Of course I'm right. Just remember, Max, all these people aren't my partner. You are. I'm silent for a second, and I can't help myself. I laugh a little, although I feel my ears heating up, my face flushing red at the way Victoria says that. I can't help that I love the way that sounds. Victoria, I'm sorry, but that was pretty tacky. Like, super cheesy. Victoria blushes a little too brightly, and it makes me grin again, taking control of the situation. What? Fuck off. Oh my god. Ungrateful. No, no, it's fine. I, it was nice hearing that. I feel like it's probably better to placate her, 
before she gets even more flustered. Sure, whatever. Victoria scowls at me, her pink cheeks fading. You still suck. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay, sure, Victoria. I'm totes aware that I probably got the stupidest grin on my face. And then I remember we should probably make an effort to start our project now that we've actually completely settled down. I take a few steps back, prompting Victoria to follow me with a raised brow. So I know it's no Seattle, but we should probably get started? Victoria hums an agreement at that, and we take the time to pace down the boardwalk, similarly quiet in our search for the perfect shot. Or maybe that's too ambitious. At this point, we're just trying to find anything to look at. Victoria? Something's been bugging me ever since she brought it up earlier, and maybe it shouldn't, but when she mentioned Seattle, I couldn't help myself. What? Victoria's response is curt, and I frown at the sound. It does I don't exactly respond quick, prompting her to turn to me. She pauses and then sighs, speaking easier. I can tell she's tense despite all that talk from earlier. Sorry, what is it? I was wondering. About? Seattle. You came from there, right? Victoria seems to be taken completely off guard at the question. She shrugs after a moment. Yeah, what about it? The thought of Seattle makes me unsure, an awkward discomfort settling in the pit of my stomach. So in all actuality, I'm not sure what I'm actually asking about. Just that I want to know something about it. I'm just... well, do you really think it's better than Arcadia Bay? You're just full of loaded questions today. I think she's gonna like anywhere you're at, Max. Victoria speaks cautiously, and then she purses her lips. I do, I guess. It's hopeful, hopelessly plain in here. At the thought of that comparison, I hum almost absentmindedly. All I can do is grasp at the strap of my bag. Ever since I moved here, I haven't even really thought about it much. Probably for the best, I think. It's not like I'd left much behind. I have only really had Fernando and Kristen to keep me company, and as amazing friends as they'd been, coming back to Chloe had far outweighed that. I almost feel like an asshole for thinking that. I guess so. You're right that there's way more to look at over there. And you'd know that how? It takes me a second to process Victoria's question. Then I stop and turn to face her, my eyes wide. She doesn't know she lived there, huh? Wait, did you think I've lived here my whole life? What? Victoria stops, and for a second I watch her sputter helplessly. Oh my goodness. Are you telling me you haven't? I grin wryly at her. Sorry to disappoint, but no. Oh. It's actually pleasant to hear Victoria stump for once, like she's totally at a loss with this information. Or maybe at not knowing it. Because she knew about your secret weeb figurines. As great as it is to have her speechless, I decide to help her out. Yeah, I, um, I used to live in Seattle until I came back here. You came back. For Blackwell, I'm assuming. At that, I can't help it. I smile drops a little and I run my thumb anxiously down the strap of my bag. She's right, of course, and she totally knows it's right. I wouldn't bother me it wouldn't bother me so much if it didn't make me remember all the grief I'd caused Chloe. Kinda? There was also Chloe. Are we gonna see a jealous Victoria? Yeah, it's a jealous Victoria! Look at that face. Right. Chloe. Victoria grinds that out as sarcastically as she can, and it actually makes me wince slightly. She seems to catch on to my reaction, though, and surprisingly, I watch her sigh and soften up. Please, don't even. Are you seriously telling me you came back for Chloe? Maybe? Blackwell is a big deal, Max. An old best friend isn't. Oh my gosh, Victoria. <laughs> no, Victoria is wrong about that. Even if I did initially come back because I'd heard about Blackwell, that doesn't mean... That's not true. Victoria tenses, and then suddenly she places her hand onto my arm. Something about the gesture is so off that my irritation is replaced with confusion. Chill. That's not what I meant. What I meant is that for fuck's sake, Mac, it's not a crime for you to put your own aspirations first. People talk so much shit about being selfish, but that doesn't mean you're not allowed to be. Victoria speaks quickly, although her voice is low and gentle, like she's trying to get it all into my skull. I swallow dryly. I guess so. But at the same time, I can't help but feel a little bad. You know? Victoria purses her lips at me, 
sliding her hand down my arm. Apparently not by much, though I understand what you're trying to get at. Your insistence on being so kind is fucking nauseating, Max. Well, have you ever considered that your insistence on being mean is too? This is kind of a dangerous conversation. Did I pick too many miss <laughs> too many bad answers? Am I getting a bad ending? I tease, but there's something deeply serious about it. Victoria watches me and then snaps her jaw shut like she's not she's got nothing to say for a second. Maybe we both have things to learn. You think? Maybe, but right now I'd rather focus on this. Victoria changes the subject so quickly I can't even be sure she said it. Not that it matters, not when I already know about it. I smile, scratching at the back of my neck. You're right, but I was thinking. Victoria groans, as melodramatic as ever, wrinkling her nose at me. Something you've been doing too much of today, apparently. Quit it, I'm being serious. Mostly. My stomach growls dangerously, and Victoria freezes for a second. She catches my gaze, and I blush a little. Oh, are you? She quips sarcastically, and I offer her a sheepish grin. We might work better on a full stomach. God, you're a mess. The, wor uh, the words come out in a little sigh, and I think they almost sound fonder than they should be. Without any more complaining, she waves her hand at me. Your choice, Max. After we got something to eat, I ended up being able to convince Victoria to loosen up a bit and check out the shops with me. I thought it'd better be, it'd be better off that way, since we obviously weren't finding anything before. In a sense, it did. We spent so much time window shopping and browsing that before we knew it, the sun is high in the sky and the wooden planks are filled with pedestrians. At least as much as it will be. The plus to all of that is that Victoria seems a lot more at ease now. Victoria is walking up ahead of me, and I've got my camera in my hands. It usually feels heavy when I'm burdened by the thought of an assignment, but right now it feels light. I'm not really focused on anything in particular. As I look, though, uh, through my viewfinder, I'm just imagining photos that could be testing the lighting. And then Victoria whirls around to face me, mouth open, hand on her hip. Where exactly do you want to go next? And my finger presses down on the shutter. The reaction is so instinctive, so immediate, that I don't realize I've taken a picture until I'm faced with Victoria's wide eyes through my viewfinder. Did you just... Lowering my camera, I bite my lip and take the photo from my camera, waving it once. Twice. When I check it, I grin at the shot. Victoria, mid-speech, standing amongst the few pedestrians of Arcadia Bay. What I love most is the fluidity of the shot. Victoria's perfect posture among a stream of people. You look good. Victoria straightens, pulling out her camera with ease. She rolls her eyes at my expression, probably, and then points right at me. I hardly have any time to adjust, standing with the photo in my camera. Smile, Caulfield. I already am. At Blackwell, me and Victoria wind up sitting on the freshly cut grass in the courtyard, going through all our photographs. My Polaroid photos are spread out in the grass in front of our legs, little squares against the green lawn. In contrast, Victoria just has her camera on her lap, open to the camera roll. I'm pressed up real close against her side to peer over her shoulder. Oh my gosh! Feel the heat of her shoulder. And she feels the heat of your titties. In retrospect, this feels a lot more intimate than it should. Yeah! Maybe not us sitting like this just me being here with Victoria in the first place. I'm used to just seeing the Vortex Club obnoxiously taking up the space whenever we're out of class, during the mornings or at lunch, all huddled up, laughing at whatever. Of course, Victoria is included in that too. Now instead of her sitting here with them, it's with me. Hello, Max. Are you even listening? Uh, yeah, um... Victoria squints at me suspiciously, pulling her finger back from where she'd been prodding at one of my photographs. When I check, it's nothing special, just a general landscape shot of the boardwalk itself. Okay, not convincing. What did I just say? How much you like that one? I tease, and Victoria laughs in disbelief. You wish. Oof, so you're saying you don't? Clutch at your heart. She just insulted. 
Victoria hums instead of giving me a real solid response, and I rolled my eyes at her. Okay, so maybe I wasn't paying attention, but I so am right now. Sure you are, only because I had to jerk you back into reality. She knocks my arm with hers, and I huff softly, mock offended. A pout makes its way onto my lips. I am! Mm-hmm. After the shoot, Victoria has seemed a lot more relaxed. Or, like I guess the atmosphere is just more relaxed in general. I'm definitely not as tense as before, either. Maybe it's the fact that all we have left to do is choose between our photos. I seriously thought that it'd, that'd be more stressful. It's not. At least, Victoria doesn't make it stressful. Dress free or not, I rub my eyes and try to focus. We have to pick something for our submission. And now, Victoria's staring right at me again, real serious. With how close we are, all I can do is manage a sheepish smile. Okay, what is it? I want to know, just for reference, which one is your favorite? I blink at the, can uh, at the question, not really sure I've heard it right. Victoria puts her camera down between our knees. My favorite, like, which one I think looks the best? Not exactly, though that is important. I mean personal preference. Hmm. That's not really a hard question to answer. Not at all. I already know exactly which photo comes to mind. What, the first one you took with her mouth open? It's just a little embarrassing to admit. I lean back on my hands and I draw in a long breath of air to prepare myself for the inevitable post-answer explanation. Well, it's actually... It takes me a moment to lean forward again. Just so I can tap my finger against the one showcasing Victoria. Where she's turned to me, ready to speak and highlighted by the pedestrians behind her. That one? There's this hesitant pause in her breath, and I rest my palm against my jeans, rubbing my hand down them. Got sweaty palms. Yeah, definitely. What about yours? It's gonna be the one she took of you, Max. I counter before she can grill me about my choice, not sure that I can handle that just yet. Victoria straightens her shoulders, tensing up. I can feel it right against my side. She heaves a huge sigh, and just from that I can tell she's not particularly confident about any of them. Out of mine? Fucking none. There's a note of irritation to her voice, backed with just the slightest disappointment. I frown, peering back at her digital camera. None? No way! They're so good! I... She pauses and hesitates. I know they're good, but they're not amazing or anything. I don't see anything special in them, nothing particularly remarkable. Just then, she deflates a little. She sags down slightly, grimacing down at her camera, and turns her head away from me. Victoria, it's whatever. I was just thinking, I want you to submit yours instead. My heart freezes up in my chest at the words, and I sit up straighter. What? Victoria glances at me, swallowing dryly and running her fingers through her bangs. I watch the action, watch the apprehension flash over her face. What, Max, are you, like, milking this for all it's worth? Defenses of a zever. I shake my head quickly. I said you should submit yours. Sorry, I'm just surprised. Oh, and why is that? We've talked about this. There's, cur there's this curiosity in her tone but it's laced with something miffed, something wary. She curls her fingers up in her cashmere sweater, and I bite the inside of my cheek. She's nervous, I think. Oh, gosh. We look over them longer than we get to sit next to each other for longer. But I could praise her instead. Uh, uh, God, <laughs> this is so hard for me. I'm gonna compliment her. It's because yours are pretty incredible too. Victoria scrunches up her nose and sniffs. I already told you, they aren't... I raise my hand to cut her off and she scowls at me. You might not think so, but don't you think you're pretty biased? I mean, I don't think the rest of mine are amazing either. That's just because I took them. We're our own worst critics, right? Or something like that. 
Victoria shuts her mouth and ends up just grumbling, nudging me back when I flash her a self-satisfied smile. Okay, all right. Ugh, you have a point there. Regardless, I still think you should submit yours. There's no hesitation in her voice as she tells me this. None at all. It's still really sinking in that even after all this, she's prepared to let me take the reins. Okay. If you really think I should, then I will. I agree quietly, and that's when I feel it. The way Victoria loosens up, muscles almost melting against me at my affirmation of her demand. I gently bump her shoulder with mine, letting her know that I'm here. I wouldn't say no. Good. If we don't win, I'm skinning you alive. I laugh battles out of my throat, and Victoria joins me. Wow, okay. Aggressive much? Only a little. Do you think I'm joking? Rolling my eyes, I reach over to take the photo in my hands, running my thumbs over it. The sun feels warm, the grass is soft, and Victoria is a better heater than her ice-cold demeanor would usually suggest. I let myself sink against her side. She rests her arms behind my back, palm flat against the grass, almost as if she's getting just as comfortable as I am. I don't know, Victoria. I think you're warming up to me. It's quiet for a few beats, and I wonder about the lack of a response, of another thinly veiled insult or snappy remark. You'd like that, wouldn't you? She finally counters, challenging me. When I respond, I don't even have to think about it. Maybe I would. <laughs>